Today we're going to look at slightly more challenging examples of inverse functions, but it's still pretty easy. Ready? Let's go. For the following exercises, find the inverse function of x, aka f minus 1 of x, for each function. So, what we need to do now uh, to find the inverse function of this function, we're going to simply follow a very simple, I hope you get it now, it's simple, uh, set of steps, all right? So instead of writing f of x, let's just start off by putting y there. Okay, y is equal to x over x plus 2. Now, when we want to find the inverse function of this thing, everywhere you see a y, you're going to write an x. And everywhere you see x, you're going to write a y. Okay, so let's just keep a note here that this represents the original function, f of x, which so does that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do when I start, you know, basically just switching these variables, I'm now creating the inverse function. So x goes there, y goes there y goes there, plus 2. Okay, so this now right here represents the inverse function of x. Okay, now the goal here is, I mean, you could stop here, but you really don't want to. You want to solve this for y. Okay, you got to solve it for y. So now that's just algebra. All right, so now why don't we do this? Let's cross multiply. The reason being is because I could put that over 1, basically, right? And we notice, oh, look, we got our fraction. We can just cross multiply, right? So this is now going to be simply x times y plus 2 is equal to y. So why don't we now distribute the x's, or, or not the x's, but just the x, right? So it's xy plus 2x is equal to y. Now I know I want my y on one side and my x is on the other, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the y on over to the left. Simultaneously, because we can do this in one step, right? I'm going to bring this x out over to the right. Okay, so I have to subtract it. So notice how this will cancel, and that will cancel. And what that will leave me with here is that will leave me with now x, y, minus y is equal to negative 2x. Okay, so let's just move this maybe over ever so slightly. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I have to solve this for y. So notice that we have in one side, we have two terms with a common y in it. That means we can pull out that common term. In other words, I'm going to pull out a y from this term and a y from that term. And if I do that now, it's going to look like this. y times x minus 1. Notice that if I multiply the y to each term, I'm going to get xy and negative y, which is exactly what I had over here, okay? So then that will equal now negative 2x, and simply now divide out the left-hand side by x minus 1 to find just y. Remember, the whole goal is to isolate y. Now what we have done here is we have now solved this equation for y, and this, my friends, is now the inverse function, okay? What you want to do, though, is instead of writing y there to make it look nice, is you want to write f of x minus 1, because this is the inverse function. The reason why I use the y's there is just to make things easier, all right? But just remember that little step at the end. So this, my friends, is the inverse function of this. So let's take a look at this second example. Let's run through it. Ready? So first thing is we're going to convert that just to a y. Just write y. y is equal to 2x plus 3 over 5x plus 4. Everywhere you see y, put an x. Everywhere you see x, put a y. So this is going to be x now is equal to 3y. Uh, whoa. Don't change the numbers, though. 2y plus 3 over 5y plus 4. Now, just math here. Simply solve it for y. you got to do math. Write algebra. You might be saying, well, why wasn't I doing math here? Yeah, you were. So I don't really know what I'm saying. But you get the idea. So we're going to cross multiply, okay? So this is now going to look like x times 5y plus 4 is equal to then 2y plus 3. Remember, this the whole thing is just being multiplied by 1, so that's why I didn't include the 1 there, because it doesn't do anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this x to each of these two terms in that parenthesis, Okay. So now this is going to look like 5, maybe, uh, yeah, 5xy, I guess. 
doesn't matter how you write it, but that's fine. Plus then 4x is equal to 2y plus 3. Now what I want to do here is I need to get all of my y's on one side, okay? And everything else to the other. So in this particular step, I'm going to subtract now, all right, my 2y on over to the left. And at the same time, we can also then, and I'll move this over a little bit, we can also get rid of this x term. I don't want to get rid of this term because it has a y in it. I don't want to move that to the other side. I want to collect all my y's on, on let's say, the left side, and then all my other things on the right, okay? So minus the 4x. So now, when we get this, notice how these two will cancel, and these two will cancel. So what are you left with? You're left with 5xy minus 2y is equal to then 3 minus 4x. Cool. We're going to do the same technique. Notice how each of these two terms have a common y. We're going to factor it out. So it's then going to look like y times 5x minus 2. Notice how here if I redistribute the y to each of those two terms, I would end up with 5xy and then negative 2y which is identical to this, 5xy minus 2y. Okay, so I know I'm right. Then that will equal now 3 minus 4x. And then just simply now divide this term on out. So we've got to get rid of it, so divide it on the left-hand side, and then divide it on the right-hand side. Notice how finding the inverse function here is, it, the operation of doing it is so easy. Just everywhere there's x, put a y. Everywhere there's a y, put an x. But the algebra then to solve it is the trick. So if you're having trouble with this, it's not the inverse functions you're having trouble with necessarily. It's going to be the algebra. So what you might want to do is check out some of our algebra uh, playlists in order to help you out with that, okay? And here it is, my friends. Here is now the inverse function. Okay, but remember, instead of writing the y, I'm going to write f of x. Actually, since I don't have a lot of space, I'm just going to erase it. Okay, just write f of x minus 1. Make your teacher happy. Okay, and that is it. This now represents the inverse function of this. Guys, I hope that helped. Please remember to help us out if you can and subscribe. It does mean a lot. And if you can, hit the like button too. Um, only if you like the video, of course. And I will hopefully see you soon. Take care.